Number three yeah. at the sports page in Mason City. We're prepping for the fights tomorrow night. North Iowa fights at the Mason City Arena. We've got two gentlemen at the table. And uh, here's what I want to do. I want to start off with just kind of a quick intro, your name and what your weight class is, all right? Leo, go ahead and kick it off, man. Yeah, all right. Uh, my name's Leo Kuntz. Uh, typically, I fight uh, 150, 175. Um, we had uh, my opponent uh, dropped out kind of last minute, so we came to an agreement to fight at 180 for this fight. Um, this will be my 20 third 24th professional fight something like that i'm 18 four and one um yeah i'm vetted been around the been around the game for a while so uh excited to be here in iowa and uh and, and ready to put on a show hell yeah hell yeah um i'm brandon samuelson and um i'm fighting at 135 okay and it, are, are you what's your i guess what's your record how, how long you been uh, fighting man this is my debut Oh, okay. love it. Any, any amateur fights? Um, I had a kickboxing fight about okay. four weeks ago up in Macon, Missouri, and I uh, ended up going to decision, and it didn't go my way. Okay. All right. But, but ready to rebound. Yes, sir. All right. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Well, beautiful. Well, I guess, uh, so you've been around the game for a while, Leo. Quite a while, it sounds like. How did the <laughs> camp... You know, go, coming up to this point, how'd that work out for you? Um, well, I've been on a three-year, actually more than three-year layoff. So, <clears throat> I mean, camp has been, you know, camp's always camp. But I've had, to, I, I've been training for 12 weeks right now. Um, found out just the beginning of this week that the opponent dropped out. So, I mean, that's obviously is that, something you never want to hear at any part of your is that is that because of a possibility of a fake knee injury? It is a possibility <laughs> of a fake okay. injury. Okay, I, d I just wanted to, I didn't know, you know, kind and of put it out there. Slash cannot and, confirm. And, and yeah. possibility of a, of a sandy vagina. <laughs> right. well, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities <laughs> Absolutely. that it could be here. I'm so, not going to lie. So. Well, the reason why I bring it up, we had this conversation actually in our last podcast on Wednesday, and we talked about the the weird nature in which all that went, and a simple Google search showed that uh, – that a picture was being reused from somebody else. So yeah, that's what it, it looked like. Yeah, that is just kind of one of those things when it comes to professional fights. I mean, there's different ways to handle, you know, backing out of a fight and, and something like that last minute, you know, especially it's a main event, from, you know, for the promotion. Like there's a lot, nobody makes you sign the contract. Nobody puts a gun to your head. It's like, oh, sign the contract, you know. Yep. So, you know, it's just one of those things where it's very unprofessional and especially at a, you know, at the local scene with, with, promotions at the local scene like main events falling out that can that, that's not good for a promotion and it's things that can easily be avoided i mean even if you give them you know a couple weeks heads up that you're not going to be able to fight like things happen in camp that happens but you have a supposedly well a fake knee injury a week before the fight like that what if they couldn't have found a replacement fighter they would have lost their main event i mean i've been training 12 weeks you know what i mean and it's just yeah. Yeah, a lot, a lot of money goes into that, a lot of promotion. I mean, we have yeah. billboards going up in town. It was a big exactly. thing. So uh, when the, the, I mean, between you and, uh, what is it, Kukenku, a march vision. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting it down. By the, by the end of the night, after a few drinks, I may uh, have a master. <laughs> Actually, but, hit it straight, yeah. That's yeah, right. but that was, the, I mean, you go around town, there's a few billboards here that has that as a main I've tag. I've seen that, yeah. And yeah. when you see something like that, like, shit happens. We understand that, right. but this, that, that was, to me, it came off as unprofessional and shit. Maybe it it's is. an unwritten thing. I don't know. No, but. no, it is unprofessional. There's no other way to put it. I mean, it's, you're contracted and we, you know, we sign contracts to fight. And like, I mean, if somebody would do something like that in the UFC, they'd lose their job. They wouldn't be fighting for the UFC ever again. Right. I, yeah. I can tell you that for sure. Like that, if, if a main event at the UFC would drop out with a fake knee injury, their contract is Dana White would wipe his ass with it. Right. You know what I mean? So, Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, on the good side of this, though, let's listen. You, we appreciate you. You saved the night, man. You're willing to move up, fight at a higher weight, right? Right. right. And, and change basically everything that you prep for. You're like, well, what right. the hell do I do now, right? So we appreciate that. And I guess how, just a, I guess, last question for you is kind of how, how did that change mentally for you? Or are you just like, what the fuck ever, I'm here to fight? Uh, well, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm vetted in the sport. I've, you know, been fighting professionally since I was 23 years old. I'm 38 right now. I've got 25, 24, I don't know even how many, over 20 pro fights, <clears throat> pro fights in right now. So, you know, I've had a 12-week training camp, and it is part of the sport. Um, fighters pull out, opponents change, it's part of the sport. So, yeah, I knew I was fighting no matter what. I was like, I don't care 
as long Love as they it. have as long as they have an opponent for me and to be honest like i didn't want to fight at 160 the the you know i had a i had a stint at 155 two ufc fights at 155 two fights with road fc at 155 at, at 155 my record is one and three at 170 my record is um 17 and one you know so so um, it didn't hurt your feelings at all did no it? not at okay. all and, and i i yeah, I don't want to be going under that 170 threshold. Yeah, really, anymore. Anyways, so. Oh okay. yeah. Uh, real quick before we uh, move on to the other guy, uh, how do you see this fight fit going out, playing out? Well, I mean, I've been training for 12 weeks and I haven't been training to fucking lose. So I can tell you. <laughs> All right. Go. Hey, I love it. I, I can, I can it. tell you, I'm going out there, um, going for a win, trying to take as little damage as possible, finish the fight as soon as possible. That's. That's what I've been training to do for the last 12 weeks. Hell, Hell yes. yeah. Hell Let's yeah. go. Now, how about you, my man? You said you just fought what, four weeks ago. Is that what you said? Yep. So what's the prep been like for you between then and now? Um, I knew about this fight when I had that last fight. So for the last four months, I've been training six days a week, two times a day, busting my ass in the gym, outside of the gym, going for runs, doing, doing anything and everything by myself that I could get done outside of the gym and just to get ready for this. Uh, taking this fight a little personal because my opponent was at my last fight and was kind of flexing in my face after oh, I just kind of lost. Shit. So oh. it, it, that, that definitely lit a fire under my ass and it's making me more hungry. And oh, yeah. I had, I had, I dealt with some, a lot of, a lot of things leading up to this fight. Um, I had a coach that I was with for four months and we built a bond and I thought it was going to last. But then once I lost my, once I lost my first, first kickboxing match, the first thing he told me after the loss was I should be fucking embarrassed of myself. And then we got back and he ghosted me. So I was like, I messaged him one day. I was like, dude, what the fuck? What, what's going on? Like, I got to fight. I'm fighting. Like, this is going to be probably one of the biggest fights of my life for, right. for the next couple of years. Hell yeah. Uh, and I'm like, dude, like, are you with me? If you're not with me, I don't care. I'll, I, like, I, I'll come up here by myself. I don't care. I just want to fight. That's all I want to do. I've, I've grew up around this sport ever since I was a little kid from i'm from davenport so i i grew up around the cage aggression a lot and uh right yep I, I think my first training session i was five years old and i did it in, at the amsterdam and it's a strip club back where i'm from <laughs> yeah that I was love that. Gordon sing a mom baby <laughs> and, and ever, ever ever since then i was hooked and then all through ever since i was like five all the way up to my junior year i got 13 years of wrestling under me and then this just this is always something i wanted to do i love i, I love What's more, but what's the what's a better job than getting to travel to kick some ass? Hell yeah, I love uh, it. So, what did you do to prepare for this fight? Do you know much about your opponent? What'd you do trying to just prepare? Um, I know, I know that uh, his he's got some good wrestling, but his his uh, gas tank is pretty weak from yeah. what I've seen. So pushing and, the pace and, and yeah. run him out of the cage. Yeah, pretty much. And um, um, I, I got some surprises. Uh, they think okay. it, they're gonna. They, th they think it's gonna be a stand-up fight, but if it, if it has to go to the ground, I know there will be a couple surprises. And hell yeah, it'll so definitely be a game changer. That kind of touches on, um, you know, how you think this fight's going. Uh, are you trying to keep it standing? You you taking them down, or you just kind of letting it play out? Um, I, I want to let it play out, but at the end of the day, I really want I really want that knockout. But Hell either, yeah. but either way, I'm here to win. It doesn't matter. I just, I, I want to get that win. Standing up on the ground, it it doesn't matter. I'm here, I'm here to get the win. And I don't, I, I, I didn't drive four hours. And I'm, I'm from, I'm from Iowa, so I can't let anybody come down. Even though I'm not from Mason City, <laughs> Iowa is still my, my Hell state. Yeah. So if you think you're gonna come down here and it's gonna be an easy fight, and I don't know what you're thinking. I like it. Right. I like it. I, I like, like it, it a lot. Sure. Hell yeah, my man. Well, Jimmer, you got any last questions, buddy? Uh, well, I have two. Uh, one is Leo, vet of the game. I've been looking over. I've been studying your uh, your record, everything. Looking over that last few nights, actually. But speaking into that, with all that, is there anything you could give him for for advice, like in what, like an up and comer, like trying to since you've already been down that road? Yeah, well, it sounds like you're definitely doing the right things already, which is you know making those sacrifices to stay in the gym. Um, you know, training multiple times a day, you know, five, six days a week, but also something that's really important along those same lines is not to be overtraining. Your body does need, need rest your body, especially with, you know, depending on what type of gym you're in with, who you're training with, what type of intensity you're doing for your training sessions, but you do 
you know, you do need to, you don't want to burn yourself out in this sport because once yeah. you, once you do that, um, I mean, that's when injuries can, can, can get, can, um, can set in. That's when, you know, the sport is so mental. That's, you know, you get yourself burnt out on the sport. You take a couple bad losses. I mean, it's easy to, it's easy for things to fall apart real fast. Yeah. So, and, and along those same lines is like nutrition, you got to make sure nutri your nutrition is good. I mean, when you're young, it's easy to, it's easy to, you know, take those things for granted because your body's so healthy. It's able to, you know, handle itself pretty well. But if if you want longevity in this sport, if you want to make the most of this sport and and be able to use your body to the highest ability, you definitely need to be looking at making sure that you're getting enough rest periods and that you're getting you're using the proper nutrition and like finding somebody to help you manage your weight cuts especially when you start getting further along in your career when the weight cuts are going to start becoming more significant when you're not just cutting like a couple pounds but when you're dropping like yeah. 15 pounds 20 pounds the week of the fight those types of things yeah. you need you need to work with a nutritionist and sponsorships you know finding finding some type of a uh, multiple streams of income basically so finding some way that you can make money aside from fighting because in these early parts in your fighting career I can tell you for sure you are not going to be making a living off of fighting yeah. and, and if you are it is not going to be fun living like, <laughs> yeah, like, right. it's be like living at <laughs> your parents place right. yeah, yeah. 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 it'll be every other week fighting too that's be right. banged up yeah. Yeah, that's right. this, this weight cut was probably the worst weight cut I dropping from 150 to 135 and the last three days I've been in just I was at the sauna and steam room just trying to get these last I would one day I'd go to bed and I'd be right on and I'd wake up and I wouldn't drink or eat anything and then somehow I'd be two pounds over so then today I woke up and I hit I hit the steam room for about a half hour then I did the sauna for a half hour hit the scale said 135 and then uh, I headed over to my dad's used his scale said 135 I was like all right I got two scales that said 135 I'm just gonna head out uh, go yeah. make go make weight so I can rehydrate and refuel for tomorrow and it, um, growing up, growing up around this sport, one thing I've definitely learned about this sport: it can either make you or break you. Yeah, and yeah. that's for sure. So I wanted, I want to say one thing. First off, appreciate you for, for sticking with your end of the commitment, no matter regardless. You could have easily walked to, you know, during the, during all the controversy with this with your opponent. Uh, but then, any shout outs you guys want to give to your sponsors or people that have helped you get to. Uh, tonight, up to this, or even throughout your fighting career? Uh, I just want to shout out everybody that's stuck with me through this whole last couple weeks. It's been crazy. Marty's, Marty's MMA, Jose Vasquez, all the people that have messaged me, just keeping me, my, my mind right. I got my two my two cornermen coming up here, Sean West and Jordan Trowers, two good guys growing up. Sean West, really good fighter growing up one of my favorite fighters from, from back from my hometown and i'm excited to have these two guys in my corner and put on the show there we go hell yeah uh yeah for me i definitely want to shout out uh sanford mma out of deerfield beach that's where i've been doing my training hey, do you know chas kelly i do know do know chas kelly i went yeah he's from Hazel, texas that's where i'm from and oh, so okay, i wrestled nice. with him yes, quite a bit yes, back nice, in the day nice nice yeah so i, I love I love for, uh, love Sanford MMA. It's been a, a great fit for me. Um, I'd also like to shout out uh, King Mo, an old coach of mine from um, ATT. I still get in work with him. He's a personal friend, not just a coach. Um, definitely like to shout him out. Uh, coach Phil Daru, uh, my strength and conditioning coach. Been working with him for a long, long time now as well, too, making sure my, my health, my nutrition, my strength and conditioning is where it needs to be. And then finally, anybody in Iowa or anybody listening to this uh, podcast, if you are looking for a place to live in South Florida, looking to buy, purchase, well, even if you look have a property down there you're looking to sell get in touch with me i'm a licensed real estate agent for the state of florida uh you hit me up and i will make sure to handle you take care of you guys and, and treat you well awesome oh yeah love it boom well thanks gentlemen hey we appreciate you guys time yep. uh, thank you guys for having us this yep. is awesome you guys got a great production set up here i mean i love everything the mics are great you guys are great <laughs> this is this was fun thank you i appreciate thank you it. thank you, thank you.